Welcome to Lion Talk International Edition. This episode focuses on the international aspects of Missouri Southern. The interviews in this program were conducted by students in the professional interviewing class in the fall 2018 semester. And there are many clubs and departmental organizations on campus. We start our program with an interview from Dr. Michael Howarth, the Assistant Professor of English and the Honors Program Director, as he talks about their latest trip to Ireland. Hello, my name is Tia McElroy, and here, we're here with Dr. Michael Howarth, the Assistant Professor of English and Director of the Honors Program. How are you doing, Michael? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me. All right. Um, so I just want to kind of touch base with you about the um, Dublin program. Mm -hmm. Um, can you tell me what were some of your goals in traveling to Ireland? Well, the, it was an honors class that we offered, and the honors students all have to study abroad for a minimum of 10 days while they're in the program. So I have been to Ireland several times before. This was actually, I think, my sixth trip okay. to the country. So, and this was a class that I had taught on two previous occasions. And there's a couple reasons why the class is successful. One is because, of course, you're going to a country that already speaks English. So there's, there's less stress uh, placed on students to understand uh, the language right, and the culture. Uh, but it's also considered one of the most beautiful and one of the friendliest countries um, in the world. And I would agree with that statement. And so there, there's certainly an attraction there uh, in the people and in the beauty. It has a very rich history and culture. So I wanted to share that with the students. And what we did was we put together a 16-week course uh, called Literary Dublin, where students would spend the semester studying Irish literature. We would talk about Irish culture. We would talk about Irish history, come to an understanding about what constitutes Irish identity. We read plays, novels, short stories, poems. We watched documentaries. We had class discussions. And then once the semester was over, we traveled to Ireland for two weeks. And we spent four days in Killarney and nine days in Dublin. And while we were there, we actually toured and visited a lot of the places that we had read about during the semester. Very fascinating. About how many uh, students are in this program? Uh, we took 18 students this time. OK, very well. Um, what were some of the biggest cultural challenges, although the language was the same, did you find there was any barriers in traveling in Ireland? Well, even though the language was the same, the accents can still sometimes be difficult for students to understand. Uh, as well, I, I found that when, when students go over there, they have to just focus on mingling with other people. Mm -hmm. You know, They can't just be on their cell phones the entire time texting. They have to actually get out and do things. And so we really um, framed the class in a way that their final journal project forced them to go out and visit sites that we did not visit as a class but they had to write reflection papers in which they talked about you know, conversations they had with Irish people, uh, places they visited that reflected the culture, places they visited that reflected the literature that we had read and discussed as a class. So um, we shared some language with them. I, the Irish people actually also speak Gaelic. Mm. So we gave them sort of a cheat sheet of some phrases that they might encounter while they were there. Um, but for the most part, the students did, did wonderfully. It was just a great group to travel with. Okay, very well. Um, and then, so what, what are some of the most popular Irish contributors to, to literature? Well, uh, William Butler Yeats is a very famous poet. Um, and of course, James Joyce, who wrote The Dead and The Dubliners, uh, which is the book uh, that The Dead is in, is one of Ireland's most famous writers. Uh, Seamus Haney who won the Nobel Prize for Literature, is a very famous Irish poet. We read his series of poems called the Bog Poems while we were there. Um, and then, of course, you have somebody like uh, Beckett, okay. who was a very famous Irish playwright. So, and Oscar Wilde was Irish. Okay. Bram Stoker, who wrote Dracula, was Irish. So there's, there's been a lot of great contributions the Irish have made to literature. Very well. Um, what, uh what are some ideas for future trips abroad that will help expand these students' view, uh, views of literature? Is there any um, possibilities of traveling to other countries, or is it just going to continue to be with <clears> the No, there, there are. I, I took a class on Greek mythology when I was in college that I really enjoyed and thought it was fascinating. And I've, I've wanted for many years to teach a class on Greek mythology and then take students to Greece 
for a couple of weeks and, and visit a lot of those sites, uh, the Parthenon, and, and travel through Athens, and, and really get a sense of, of Greek history and culture and how it's contributed to um, a lot of, of other different national literatures. Are there well. any steps being taken to make that happen in the near future? Or is that kind of just like head. a dream? Just okay. in my head. Very well. Yeah. And then uh, my last question is, how does this experience grow you as a professor? Well, it makes me want to explore other types of literatures that I am not that familiar with. You know, okay. I didn't study Irish literature in college. And so the very first time I taught this class, which was back in 2012, you know, I had to learn a lot about the history and the culture and I had to put together the syllabus and I had to read a lot of these books because I wasn't sure if I wanted to use them or not. So the more I teach the class, the more I learn about Irish history and Irish culture and identity. And it makes me want to maybe look at some other countries like Greece. Um, I'd like to look at Icelandic mm. literature. Uh, just a, a lot of these other types of literatures that I'm not very familiar with, it, it makes me want to read more of them and find out who the writers were and why they wrote what they did and what kind of contributions they've made. Okay, very nice. Well, I want to thank you so much for taking the time to come and uh, talk to us about this. And uh, this is Tia McRoy signing out of Lion Talk. And now we're going to turn from the honors program over to sports. Our next guest is Sebastian Arenas, and he's going to be talking to us a little about the life as an international athlete from the UK. He plays football here at Missouri Southern. Welcome to Lion Talk. I'm Linda Marlowe. I'm here with Sebastian Arenas. Um, Arenas. Arenas. <laughs> he is an international student from Australia. He is currently playing for um, MSSU's uh, football team. What position do you play, Sebastian? I play on the offensive line. I play right guard. Okay, so what made you decide to come to the U.S. to play for us? Um, I played back home. Um, it's very small. You don't, you don't get your school paid for and stuff back home. Mm -hmm. It's all at the club level, so I got offered to play junior college football in Texas for two years, mm -hmm. which I done. Once I finished, I signed to a different school in Texas. Mm -hmm. Because I didn't graduate, I became ineligible. So I went home for a year and a half, and this was the only place where the offer still stood, I guess. Mm -hmm. so. Okay. So how long are you here for? Um, this is my first semester, and I'll be here until the end of the spring 2020. Okay, mm -hmm. nice, so a while. Mm -hmm. So do you plan on graduating from Missouri Southern or do you plan on leaving to graduate back home once you're... Uh, no, so I'll, I'll, I'll graduate with my bachelor's from Missouri Southern okay. and then whether or not I want to do continue with my schooling or not, I'll do that back home soon. Okay, so uh, you say you're going to graduate with your bachelor's. Um, your bachelor's in what? Uh, exactly? Kinesiology. Okay, mm -hmm. nice. And what do you plan to do with that? I want to be a strength and conditioning coach. Um, Hopefully get some experience out here and then take that back home and work with a rugby team or something like that. So, oh, nice. mm -hmm. so does that transfer the same um, as, like, would it transfer the same in your country? I'm a little bit, I haven't, to be honest, I haven't really looked into that. Mm -hmm. I'm a little bit worried about that, but I know I've had other friends that have studied in America and all transferred across fine, so, mm -hmm. especially the kinesiology is so big here mm -hmm. and it's very well respected in America, so I'm, I'm sure that it will. But yeah. So if it doesn't, if anything doesn't, if everything doesn't transfer over there, do you plan on coming back to the U.S. to continue that career path, or do you just plan on staying in Australia? No, I'm just, I'll stay. I'll stay back home because unless I'm playing football here, I can't afford to come to school here. Mm -hmm. Whereas the government pays for schooling back home, mm -hmm. and you pay it back once you start working. So if I do need to take a couple of extra semesters back home, I'll do that through the government back home. Mm -hmm. And once you go back, do you have any plans of, do you later, would would you later think about coming back to the U.S. for visiting or just yes. uh, live or at all? Live, I'm not sure. Like, I'm sure if the opportunity arises where I, I'll end up with a good job and stuff like that, mm -hmm. I'll definitely come back and maybe make a life out here. But if not, I'll be coming back to visit my friends and stuff. Yeah. Nice. Mm -hmm. And you've made a lot of relationships. Yeah, so I have, I have a lot of good friends in Texas and... This is my first semester here, but I do have a lot of good friends um, here as well, so. Okay, um, so what else, what do you like to do when you're not on the football field? Really just hang out uh, with my friends and that, play PlayStation. Um, I try to do as much homework and stuff as I can, but um, yeah, like I'm, I'm pretty dependent on, on my friends and stuff because I don't have a car out here and stuff, so. Mm -hmm. If they go out on the weekends or we're just chilling at somebody's house, that's that's what I get myself into, you know. So. Oh, nice. So, uh, with the 
do you not have enough cards? Does the international program here help you guys a lot when, as far as like getting around? Um, or do you guys have friendship? Uh, I had talked to Stacy and she said y'all have uh, sort of friendship families here. Yeah, so at the very beginning of the semester, I had to do like an international program thing. Mm -hmm. um, but I just done that to get into my classes. Mm -hmm. um, I know they would like, they do warm up trips every week or something. And, and the school would help all international students with that. But in terms of me, I just, because I'm always either practicing or, or doing homework and stuff. Um, I just rely on my roommate to take me. So. Nice, mm. nice. And so you said you're a big uh, PS4, so are you yeah. like, is Red Dead a big thing right now? It is, it is. I, I don't play it as much. I'm just on my Fortnite and, and uh, Call of Duty and stuff. But, yeah, it is. It's huge. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for sitting down and talking to us. That is all for today. And mm. I will see you guys back in the studio. And there are many international students attending Missouri Southern. Our next guest will be Jimena Figueroa. She'll be talking a little bit to Linda about her background and how that has affected her experience as a student here at Missouri Southern. Welcome to Lion Talk. I'm here with Jimena Figueroa. <laughs> Today we're going to be uh, diving deeper into life on the other side uh, of a student who may not be international but may be from a different country and her experience here at Missouri Southern and how she uh, and what made her choose coming to Missouri Southern. So what made you choose coming here? Uh, well, my older sister, um, Jessica, she actually graduated from here with her bachelor's a few years ago and she had a really great um, experience here and um, I also got a bunch of scholarships here so that was more deciding factor. Okay, and what is your, uh, what degree are you going after? Uh, bachelor's in uh, international business. Okay, and what made you choose this degree? Um, I've always been interested in pursuing a, um, a career in business, and I think that international business would allow me to travel, which I would really like to do in the future. Okay, so uh, you said you like to travel. Where do you hope that your career takes you? Uh, well, I'd really like to go overseas, like in Europe and Asia, and you know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know uh, like which country specifically, I just would like to travel as much as I can as possible because I haven't traveled out of the country before, so that's definitely something I want to do. Mm -hmm. And what, um, what company are you hoping to work for like as far as your, do you have a specific company that you would like to negotiate for? Um, well, I haven't really looked into that as much, but um, I would like to go out of state if possible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So with international business, do you plan on going more towards the drug side, like the medical side of international business and uh, doing different drugs overseas and marketing that? Mm -hmm. Or do you plan on staying more with uh, like um, merchandise and stuff like that? Uh, I think I like to pursue it in merchandise just mm -hmm. because um, if it was more towards the pharmaceutical side, um, I don't know, I, I don't feel like that would be for me since it's more like science oriented and things like that. But yeah, I think merchandise would be interesting. Nice. So where do you see yourself um, in, let's say, five years after you graduate? Five years after I graduate, um, I hope to be more than <laughs> like at an entry level, <laughs> hopefully. Um, I think business is really one of those degrees where you can move up, but I feel like it's also hard too because a lot of people do major in that mm -hmm. and it is pretty popular. But um, I hope that I am moving forward in my career and I'm not like in one spot. Okay, and you'd mentioned earlier that you got a lot of scholarships to Missouri Southern. Um, do you think that really pushed you to come here? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I really applied for a lot and I kind of, that's basically all I did my senior year of high school. Mm -hmm. So um, just getting like my full ride here and having extra back in my pocket was really nice. Nice, and so from, um, I know, uh, you, where are you from originally? Um, so my family is from uh, Tamaulipas, Mexico, and um, but I was actually born here in Joplin. Okay. Do you think that um, do you get to travel a lot back to uh, your city, your home city? <laughs> no, um, I actually haven't. I've been close by, like Brownsville, Texas, which is literally right on the border. But no, I haven't um, been able to travel back there yet. Okay. Do you hope to do that in uh, your career of travel as an international saleswoman? Yeah, I think it'd be interesting um, because it would be cool to work with people from my culture specifically. Mm -hmm. But um, I'll just have to see which company I go with and where I'd be able to travel. Okay, so 
being that you are from uh, Mexico, do uh, <laughs> do you speak do you speak another language? Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, Spanish is my first language. Wow, nice. So, do you think that's going to really help you in your career? Uh, I think it will because it kind of gives me an advantage. And um, other than like in Latin America, I could um, help out or travel like in Spain and other Spanish-speaking countries. Nice, nice. And so when taking your inter your international courses, like your language course, you must be already thinking about taking Spanish. Yeah, um, <laughs> I'm thinking about testing out, honestly, mm -hmm. but uh, hopefully I'll be able to do that. If not, it'll be fun to see how my teacher um, shows the Spanish language. Nice. Well, I think it is amazing and you have sound like you have a good clear path to where you're going and thank you so much for joining us here on Lion Talk. Back to you. And we'll be right back after these messages. What's up, Rory? Hey, Robert. I thought you might want to give that game a rest and get outside for a bit. Wow, this is great. Thanks, Rory. The real adventure is lived in real life. And to learn a little more about how the international students actually get to Missouri Southern, Linda will be talking to Stacy Clay, the Director of International Affairs, about some of the processes that are involved. Welcome to Lion Talk. I'm here with Stacy Clay, Coordinator of International Student Services. Hi. <laughs> um, so today I wanted to talk to you about uh, international students and the process it takes for them to get here. Okay. And uh, w some of the requirements that is uh, held um, upheld for them. Okay. Sure. So uh, first, what does it take for international students to come here? What are some of the requirements? Okay. Um, well, just like uh, U.S. students, domestic students, they have to meet the minimum. Um, admission requirement, academic requirement. Um, they also have to meet an uh, English proficiency requirement if English is not their native language. Mm -hmm. um, and they also have to provide um, a certain amount of financial verification for one academic year. Mm -hmm. And that's for issuance of um, their I-20 form that they need to apply for their student visa. Okay. So what if a student meets all of the requirement but one or so? Mm -hmm. uh, generally what that would fall under is the English. Okay. Uh, most of our students who apply meet the academic requirement mm -hmm. but don't necessarily meet our um, English proficiency requirement. So um, I review every um, application that we have on a case-by-case -case basis mm -hmm. and if I see a student has the academic background and the the um, meet the qualifications for that mm -hmm. uh, we will but not the English we mm -hmm. will um, conditionally admit them meaning they would attend our intensive English program mm -hmm. and then once they reach a certain level in that program or reach a certain test score mm -hmm. then they be can become academically admitted so they could start their uh, degree classes. Okay, and is there a certain amount of years that a student must be like here for or um, before they leave or anything mm -hmm. like that? Uh, no, there really isn't. Um, we have students who are here for a semester on maybe an exchange basis. Mm -hmm. um, and then we have students who are here for four to six years to complete their degree. Mm -hmm. um, but as long as they continue in an uh, accredited uh, degree program, mm -hmm. they can remain in the U.S. The only time that any uh, like time restrictions is whenever they have completed their degree. Okay. They have what's called grace periods. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and where do you think the largest pool of international students come from? Um, on our campus, we have 47 different countries mm -hmm. that are represented, but um, the number one would be Saudi Arabia. Mm -hmm and then um, Japan, mm -hmm. South Korea, and the British Virgin Islands okay. are our top. Mm -hmm. Nice. So do you think um, with uh, such diversity, how do you make sure all of your students, your international students are taken care of? Yeah, that's the trick. That's, that's where it gets to be, um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we really do try to have 
uh, resources available mm -hmm. for every student when they arrive to campus, mm -hmm. um, at, at least their first time. Mm -hmm. We pick them up from the airport. Mm -hmm. um, we will take them to campus if they're living on campus. Mm -hmm. We take them uh, shopping so that they can get the items they need that they maybe not you could only pack so much. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't expect an international student to pack a pillow mm -hmm. or, you know, a heavy blanket mm -hmm. or a winter coat. Some students have never even experienced really cold weather before. Yeah. I just had a conversation yesterday about that. Um, but we also have friendship families, mm -hmm. um, which are volunteers from our community mm -hmm. that will um, kind of adopt a, a student while they're here and they'll take them for uh, dinners or if they want to go out and see parts of the of our community outside of Joplin mm -hmm. they will do that and also we have a very active international club mm -hmm. that makes sure that our students get to experience everything and get everything they need for their needs Wow well it sounds like you guys have it all together here and that you guys are very very in the uh, very hands-on with the students. Yes, we are, yes. And so I thank you for the opportunity uh, to have me interview with well, you. Well, you're very welcome. And I learned so much today, so thank you very much. Well, hey, you're very welcome, and I have a lot more to say if you have any further questions for me. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. We've heard about how Missouri Southern is working to become a university with a wide and diverse international dynamic. But some of the benefits to Missouri Southern's international efforts are the trips they're able to put on each semester. Our final guest is Dr. Susan Smith, and Tia had the privilege of talking to her about her travel and how she was able to bring some of Sweden to Missouri Southern students and the community as she talks about a program she was a part of putting on. Hello, and welcome to Lion Talk. My name is Tia McRoy, and I'm here with Dr. Susan Smith, the Director of Vocal Studies. Hi, Susan. How are you doing today? Very well, thank you. Okay, I know you mentioned your voice is a little yes. bit <laughs> under the weather with all of this cold. Yes, um, uh, I was fortunate enough to lose it last week, so <laughs> it's just coming back. Well, I'm glad it's back just in time for this interview. Um, so we're running a program um, trying to educate students on the international aspects of mm -hmm. education. And so um, you got to take a trip to... To Sweden, Estonia, and Finland. Okay, those are that's a broad travel. Um, so, how um, was what was your favorite uh, part of the trip as far as vocally? Well, I knew that you would ask me that. <laughs> and I thought, wow, could I single out any one thing? Uh, I do think it was our actual performances when we were in um, Uppsala Cathedral. It's the tallest. Um, oldest functioning Lutheran church in Northern Europe. And it's just fantastic, it's gorgeous. The uh, reverb was like 11 seconds. Oh, wow. uh, and then when we went to Estonia, uh, we were also in a very old church and we got to um, share that with a choir from uh, Tallinn. And that was really fun because we did one of their songs and they did Shenandoah of ours. And the last um, thing we did was in Helsinki, we were in the Rock Church and it actually was out of rock. Oh my goodness. And it, when it rains, the rain comes in and it goes down the rock and then goes out through a filter. So you actually see the rain in the church mm -hmm. and it was raining when we were performing. It has a copper dome. It has fantastic acoustics. So I'd say every time we performed, we were incredibly lucky. Wow, that sounds like an amazing opportunity. Um, how difficult was it for your students or you to learn these songs in a foreign language? Actually, uh, we had a Swedish person. She um, is Sara um, Bilo, and she's from Carthage, and she's from Sweden. And so when they were singing in Swedish, she would come and give them their diction lessons. So when we got to Uppsala, we also had a master class with uh, a director who also gave us another song and taught the Swedish to us as well. Well, that seems like perfect timing then to yes. have somebody so local help with that. 
Wow. Um, are there any other uh, future plans to incorporate the international trips in the vocal department? Sure. Uh, we have been doing that every semester, I believe, for the last hmm, maybe four years, where we have put together uh, a vocal chamber recital that is part of the international semester. And we will then sing in the language of that country if it is a possible you know, thing to do. Uh, but yeah, we've done um, Spanish, British, um, <laughs> and of course we did uh, Finnish, uh, Swedish, Norwegian in our last uh, recital that we did just a few weeks ago. Yeah, I got to see that. I oh, actually brought my yeah. three children there yeah. and it was an amazing performance. Your face kind of lit up when you said learning British. Was there, <laughs> was there a mean, challenge It's not really a challenge at <laughs> <Okay>. all. <laughs> Is it just like a, the accent? Or? No, no, I mean, it's, it's in English, of course. Okay. So you're just learning um, songs that were written by British composers. Okay. So be the same as American. Got it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Um, so my last question is, how do you think that the international program strengthens the students in their vocal careers? Oh, my goodness. Uh, I personally have had so many opportunities to go and tour abroad through our program. And we've always taken quite a number of students um, the first time we went, I believe there were 56 in the group oh, wow. that went overseas. And just getting the cultural and historical significance of each country, some of them had never really even been out of Missouri. Some had never been on a plane. Oh, my and that was the case this time as well. Wow. So, I mean, we are so fortunate to have this as our mission. That's really awesome. That sounds like a great opportunity, and it sounds like the right person is in charge of that. So, well, so it's not me, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but <laughs> well. because um, uh, the the choral director, because he is the uh, the director of each choir, um, he's the spearhead of it, okay. and I did kind of a co leading of this because I have a lot of background in Scandinavian um, just history, okay. food all of that because I am Scandinavian. Oh, that's great. Yes. That's great. All right, Susan, I want to thank you so much for taking your time out of your day to come oh, and- Thank uh, you. I'm glad to do it. Okay. And that's Tia McRoy signing off of Lion Talk. And as you can see, there are many ways Missouri Southern State University is working toward expanding their international programs and how it benefits students as they expand their worldview. I invite you to join us for the next episode of Lion Talk. I'm Jacob Moreland, and thanks for tuning in.